This next section is going to be a little bit of a repeat of something we've already seen in the convolution section, but we're going to formalize it uh, a little bit more. Um, and we're going to talk, we're going to go back to our grayscale image over here, and we're going to talk about edges. And um, computer vision for many, many decades uh, before this latest AI machine learning uh, craze was really obsessed with extracting low dimensional, easy to represent, easy to compute information. And it was thought for a long time, and I would argue even today it's thought, that things like edges were extremely useful uh, representation for the underlying image. So notice what I've done here. By the way, I'm not going to tell you just yet how I've done this, but we did sort of see that in the convolution section. But what I've done here is I've extracted the edges. What do I mean by an edge? Well, you can compare it up here. It's where there is a transition from dark to light or light to dark. So for example, on my lapel here, um, when I go from dark to light, light to dark, there is a transition. And you can see if you only saw this image, you probably would recognize it as Albert Einstein, which suggests that this really, really simple image as compared to this one up here actually carries quite a bit of information. And why is that useful? Well, in a computer vision system where you're trying to reason about the world, you're trying to do face recognition, object detection, object recognition, if you can have this much simpler representation that, uh, and do much lower computations on it, well, that's a big win all around. And so what we're going to talk about in this section is what are edges, um, how do you compute them, um, and we'll both look at the underlying mathematics and at the code that will implement some standard edge detection uh, techniques. Okay, so let's get started in defining an edge. And so the easy definition is sort of not the mathematical one. So let me start with that one. So what I'm going to show you here is a magnified view of Einstein's tie. And what I'm showing you right here is a 1D slice of the intensity through that tie. So on the vertical axis is at the bottom zero, black, and at the top is 255 uh, white. And we could have done this in color and there'd be three plots here corresponding to the transition in red, green, or blue. But for the purposes of edges, we can just work with the intensity image, which is just the brightness of the underlying image. And we don't have to worry so much about color right now. And what you notice here is that there is a big change in intensity. So it's, it's, it's bright here and then it goes dark. And similarly here, it's dark and it goes bright. And we would, uh, we classify this point and this point right here as an edge, of course, corresponding to those two points you see there. It is a transition from bright to dark. Now, I took a horizontal slice through the image, but that, of course, was arbitrary. I could have taken a vertical slice through the image. So here's a vertical slice, same thing, white, 255, black. And now this axis is the Y axis through that little magnified view there. And again, you see that transition from bright to dark and dark to bright as you go through the tie. And that point right here and that point right there corresponding to those two points in the image are edges where there is a transition from bright to dark. And again, I could have done this in color where it's a transition from red to green or blue to red, whatever. I'm defining this in terms of intensity, but it's really just a change in something. And so here's our definition. It's a qualitative definition, but it's a definition nonetheless. Edges are high rates of change in intensity, okay? Now, we're gonna wanna define this mathematically. And that word, rate of change, is a good indicator of what we're going to do, because that sounds a lot like the type of thing you might do in calculus, where you compute derivatives. And so what we're gonna do is talk a little bit about derivatives, and then we're gonna talk about how those derivatives can be used to compute edges, and we're gonna see what the power of those edges are for representing images.